Y254. Imagine. A very good evening to you. Thank you so much for sticking to Y254 TV. I hope you've had a lovely day today. We are coming to you live from Nairobi, Kenya, and today is the 9th of November. So my name is Cheryl Blessing, and I am your host on the Power Talk Show. And this evening, we want us to discuss a conversation that has been very prevalent in recent years. We want to understand what leads to divorce and separation. We all know we dream of this love story that's have with a happy ending and with no struggles. And we all romanticize the idea of finding the one true partner for us. But sometimes we meet the wrong people and then we have to separate from them. What are some of the things that lead to, to this? How do we avoid making uh, important life decisions like that? And how do we deal with things like that when we are faced with them? And joining me this evening is Jenny Washira, the lovely counseling psychologist, and she is the CEO of, uh, is it Sadfa? Af Sadref Africa. Sadref Africa. It's a very lovely to have you. How are you feeling? Wow. I'm really excited to be here yes. this evening mm. and thank you for having me on the Power Talk show. Ah, we're excited to have you here as well. Thank you so much for joining us. And right next to Jenny, we have Nam Festus, who is an advocate of the High Court. Welcome, Nam. Thank you. And he also looks lovely. Like our guests, Leo, Wameamua, they're dressing to kill. Thank You're you. very welcome. And I want us to take uh, this discussion slowly, understand what are some of the causes of divorce, what leads to separation, how do we deal with issues like that, the impact of divorce and separation, as well as what comes after, because definitely there's life after it. So you can go on our social media platforms, which is at Y254, on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Ask us any questions. If you have a comment, type that out immediately and send it, and we will sample your comment as we progress with this show. I'm so excited to hear from you, and you can also find me on my personal pages, which is at Cheryl Blessing. So I think to kickstart the conversation, we want to understand relationships. We all start from a point of love. We meet someone and we are in our lover's phase, we're in the honeymoon phase. Sometimes it leads to marriage, but then it can lead to separation. It can lead to divorce. So let us understand maybe the definition of marriage, especially from an advocate of the high court. How do we define love in today's, uh, according to the law, the constitution today? Do you want us to define? Describe love or marriage? Marriage, oh. <laughs> specifically. <laughs> because, you know, <coughs> we find some people who are married according to the law, but they're not aware of that. So let us start by defining marriage in the Constitution, and then we can talk about love and relationships. Marriage is a, is a union. You can describe it as a union of two people, voluntary union of two people, at the exclusion of all the others. Yes. Okay, and that was very, <laughs> that was, uh, it must have mm -hmm. read that way in the Constitution. Uh, uh, I also wanted to get from you uh, some types of marriage, because in the past it used to be the traditional and the white weddings, mm -hmm. but now we have come, we stay. You stay with someone for longer than six months, mm -hmm. you're married according to the law. So those are some of the things that I wanted us to understand, because in this day and time, so many people cohabit and live with their significant others for years even and then afterwards they just go their different paths so maybe you can define what are some of the things that will make you married according to the constitution as power laws of kenya we have different types of marriages uh, the well-known marriage is the christian marriage these are the ones we see in our religious churches and whichever uh, religion uh, one professes 
we also have um, the customary marriage, the traditional weddings we always see around, where people, they don't intend to go to churches, but maybe they follow a certain uh, tradition to, uh, to solemnize their union. Then we can also have the civil marriage. The one people now goes to the attorney general, it has uh, its own procedures. And uh, one thing I have to mention is that even if you do religious marriage or traditional marriage, you have still to notify the AG, that is the attorney general, so that it becomes official and you have the certificate. Churches, yes, produces their certificate of marriage, but they have to also bring it to the attention of the AG so that it is uh, registered as a marriage. We also have the Islamic uh, marriages. We also have the Hindu marriages. Uh, there is one you have mentioned which uh, legally we can discuss, the one called Can We Stay? Uh, it's not a form of marriage within our laws, as, as I can say, mm -hmm. but uh, you will find people practicing it. There are other things that now connect them that might make it dim as a, as a, as a marriage. Mm -hmm. So it, it varies with um, one aspect and another. But the major forms of marriages that have uh, stated are the Christian marriages, uh, Hindu marriage, Islamic marriage, civil marriage. That is now the one called the, oh, the one done by the age. Oh. Yes, and the traditional okay. marriage. That was very interesting yeah. because, you know, some people think, utapeleka ngombe nyumbani na wewe ni bibi yangu. You know, so it was very interesting for you to clarify that because you need to notify the civil system for you to get a certificate of marriage. Now, also with relationships, the, the transition for, from you meeting this person who you say is the love of your life. Most times we, we <coughs> meet someone in this day and time, we call people the love of my life and then it's seasonal. So next year there's another love of my life. So marriage and love comes up it's intertwined almost, almost because yeah. for ladies sometimes we assume if we're dating you we're dating to marry i can see you as my husband so maybe jenny you can give us maybe a, an image of what your idea of love was and uh, marriage your expectations from relationships that you wanted while you were while you were dating as a young girl okay perhaps to uh, let you know um I was married for 12 years, but uh, I've now been separated, divorced for the last 11 years. Mm. Yes. So, and I know before getting to marriage, like the dream of every girl, you know, uh, you get, as you say, just during the time of courtship, you know, uh, as a lady or as a girl, you are looking forward to settling with the person. And that was it for me. It was not a matter of that, like uh, we are wasting each other's time or, or rather we are having fun. We had a, a future, you know, like we, you know, to look up to, you know. Yeah, but uh, just getting into that space, we are, you are very naive, you know, you know, uh, fine, that is it. No, even not putting a lot of work onto it, it will automatically get into marriage and that is it. Yeah, but a shock on me getting into that, that was not the case. Mm. Mm. So it was different than your fantasies mm. and what you expected. Yeah. Okay. Mm. And that was interesting. You were married for 12 and you've been separated for 11. Yeah. So that took you, it must have taken a lot for you to get to the decision of I'm no longer happy in this marriage. I no longer want to be in this marriage. So you can explain uh, the definitions of divorce and separation as a psychologist. How do you differentiate the two? Um, first, uh, if I may just put it in a layman's language, because, okay, I'm talking as that person who has gone through uh, separation and divorce as well. Yeah, but... Um, just to before even i get there to let you know no woman and even i want to believe even a man who gets into marriage with the aim that i'm going to get out so you get into it you invest you do what it is knowing that it's going to last you know yeah but uh while there things happen and there's one thing that um, a lot of people ignore i know at the beginning uh, because you want it to work, you'll get to ignore a lot of things. There'll be red flags, you know. 
but uh, there's this assumption all the time like uh, okay I'll get I'll fix this you know it's okay I can get into it and I fix it and even for from my personal um, experience you know there was a, uh, many red flags but uh, the thing was like this small I can fix it you know but uh, getting inside there it was not possible and just to I learned the hard way is not easy to change anyone you can only change yourself mm -hmm. but uh, you cannot change uh, uh, anybody else so getting there I know even in the mm, while in marriage even for the 12 years is it's not that it was that smooth you know uh, there was a lot of um, how do I put it okay uh, conflict is they expected but to a way like you cannot even agree to solve anything that that mm -hmm. comes you know even the conflict you cannot even um, uh, solve it in a healthy way so mm -hmm. there's a lot of uh, uh, it got to a point uh, the, the atmosphere was really heated you know it mm -hmm. was toxic and uh, it was about everybody protecting themselves now not to be hurt it's uh, about you yeah but uh, one thing even as to get to the question you've asked you know even you know getting to separation and divorce even before you get you physical you get to physically live yeah, you realize that you live first emotionally you are there but you are not there you left because already you've started like now you're starting to protect yourself you are starting to save something for yourself you know in case it doesn't work in case it doesn't go the way it goes mm -hmm. so even many of the people where once you come out physically somebody tells you i i got separated six years ago but i was still i was stuck there, there physically yes. yes so it's almost like self-preservation mm -hmm. so you detach yourself from this person so that when you actually separate physically mm -hmm. it does not hurt as much mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. so we started by that uh, emotional uh separation so mm -hmm. getting to the physical one uh, you have already processed uh, a lot of uh, the emotions that mm. comes with uh, separation mm. yeah okay mm. and that's interesting because you pointed out no one gets into marriage with the intention of divorce you do not want even relationships i tend to believe no one truly gets into a relationship thinking that we're going to break up someday you always see the future you're always hopeful and just eager to see what is going to come out of it but unfortunately sometimes you separate and as you said it's because you may have so many differences they may be so many red flags and if you're familiar if you've been watching us for so long you're aware that we've handled so many conversations on how to deal with relationships how to identify these red flags and walk away before it's too late so you can go on our youtube page and just see some of those videos if you want to update yourself but now i also want to understand what what is the legal process of divorce if i want to let's say i'm married and i decide that it has been so long i've been trying for so long and it's not really working out so i need to separate myself from this guy so festers what is the process of divorce before i come to the process of divorce let me start by separating uh, giving an insight into divorce and separation uh, there is the separation part then there is the divorce part uh, judicial separation is whereby a party decides now or maybe circumstances has now made them uh, maybe the marriage is not working as much as we cannot say it has broken down irretrievably but there are things that are not working for them the reason as to why one can do a divorce is by, uh, let me first define divorce before I come to separate divorce is when now uh, you do you dissolve the marriage that you had entered into so there are rules regarding divorce in Kenya like you cannot divorce in, if you, the marriage has not been there for less than three years mm -hmm. so in such a circumstance you will get as Jenny says you will get someone you has gotten into a marriage after one or two months they find this thing is not working and things are getting down so they decide because with the law restrictions for three years is when we can do dissolve the marriage let us do judicial separation mm. some other people yes you might want to divorce you one might want to end the marriage fully but now you find out of your religion or maybe out of your tradition you feel uh, divorce might not work for me so separation is where the marriage is still there legally 
but uh, physically it is not together. there. Yes, um, uh, you people are apart. You are doing your things separately. Mm -hmm. So that is that is the difference. You will find in separation. Yes, the marriage certificates are there. Yes. you guys are in. in uh, you are united because of the marriage, but really you people are not obtaining or doing as per the marriage people do. Mm. So that is when now if uh, you decide if you are not maybe binded by the three years, you are not binded by the uh, religion or uh, tradition and also the marriage or maybe you think yes we might be as Jenny says you think you can fix things. Mm. So you say for this, this time let me go back to let's my mother's separate. place. Uh, mm. Let's see, you can involve coaches, you can involve elders, you mm. can involve uh, these people from church. So you are still under separation. You have not actually made your mind yeah. that we dis want to dissolve this. The marriage. Uh, the marriage fully. Okay. So divorce is when now you decide, uh, let's end this. Uh, mm. Because it is not working for us. Let us just make it uh, official. Uh, official that we are no longer there. Okay. There are processes of uh, going through that uh, divorce. Like the party who now wishes, who is more aggrieved, let's say, let me use that. Who is more aggrieved, like you will find maybe the man yes is also feeling we need to divorce, but he doesn't want to make the first step. Mm. So whoever will want to make the first step might approach court. Uh, there is a way of approaching court through a petition. Uh, that is the petition for divorce, which you file in court. Uh, well, there are documents that accompany it apart from the petition. You will as well file an affidavit in support of that petition. You will do your witness statements. Then you file it formally in court, whereby you will be given a case number. Uh, once you file it, you also have to file uh, or get from the registrar a notice to appear. Now, for the party that you want to divorce oh. or your partner that you are in a, a, a marriage in. Uh, once that is signed, you will have to serve them upon now the other party. You mm. will call them the respondent. And uh, once they are served, they are given 15 days. They also need to file in their documents, either agreeing that, uh, yes, we can dissolve this, or no, yes, we can dissolve, but now you are saying there are grounds for divorce. One is cruelty, uh, there is desertion. Mm. So one might be saying the other one is cruel. This one is saying, no, we are dissolving, yes, but we are not dissolving on the ground of cruelty. Oh. It is because of desertion. So when this other party, the respondent, comes in, he might also file an answer to the petition and a cross petition, if he so wishes. But he can just decide to file an answer to petition mm. and state his reasons or if he has agreeing or is not agreeing. Once that is done, then the court will now, uh, the party that approach court again will go for something we call the registrar certificate. Mm. The registrar certificate is where by now the court certifies that uh, all parties have come on board. Mm. They have filed all the documents they wish so to rely on. And now we can hear this divorce the petition. Case. Yes. Mm. So uh, it doesn't matter whether the other party that has been named uh, has filed or not. They <coughs> must be issued because in Kenya, uh, the divorce, whoever wishes a marriage to be dissolved on the basis of the grounds of those divorce has to convince court that indeed these these things are there. Oh, if you claim present. there was a da one party was adulterous, you have to prove. Oh. If you claim the other party was cruel, you also and have to prove. And if you can't prove, does that mean they can just dismiss your case and say you stay married? Uh, of course, if you don't prove, then you have not uh, established the grounds for divorce. <laughs> and, uh, Imagine that. It becomes that. interesting <laughs> when the other party now comes and say, you see, uh, this has never happened and there's nothing because yes. you see in law mm. there's something called conniving, condoning True. and uh, so engaging, like allowing malicious. the other party to, to also do. Like if to you today you are beaten and you just keep quiet, then later you come and tell court, no, you see I was beaten in the year 2009, now I mm. want a divorce. What did you do at that time? Mm. So you have also to True, prove your grounds. Period. Yes be interesting yeah. imagine you going to court and filing for divorce <laughs> the court dismisses it and says you stay married because i wonder how you will deal with each other after <laughs> but now 
let's understand what leads to divorce. Because Jenny, you mentioned one of the things was you, you talked about the red flags and also the fact that you could not even resolve conflict in healthy manners. So I want to understand what are other things that caused this divorce? What made it very inevitable for you to say, enough is enough, I can't do this anymore, I have to walk away? Mm. Um, many things that, uh, but you come to uh, realize them while you are in marriage that mm. you didn't see before. Or rather, you see, we say love gets to blind you, so you don't even get to see uh, the, the red, red flags. flags. So when you are inside, uh, that's when they come out so clear. Or rather, the other party, it's easy for them to pretend during courtship. But now when you're in marriage, the time comes, they can no longer pretend. They have to be to remove the mask and be themselves. So uh, something else I can point out, you see, uh, there's a reason why you get into marriage. And that's the reason that uh, uh, took you or me in person into marriage. With time, I found uh, is not the same way that we are pursuing. You see, the way you begin and you feel you, have, you are going the same direction, you have the same goals that you want to achieve, in life but getting there once now you uh, the other person cannot pretend anymore they have to be themselves so you find these um uh these uh how do i call it like you are not now even reasoning the same way you mm. know everyone is going their own direction so you cannot even sit and agree on just simple and common things you know what do we do about this how do we do uh, do we buy this property where do we take our children to school so you find like you are in the same house but everybody is doing uh, their own things you cannot sit and agree uh, on one mm. something else I think uh, with time is just being uh, do I call it uh, self-centered you get to a point you do not want to change who you are to accommodate to accommodate the other person mm. so you want to remain that person you know so everybody thinks their own way. For me, this is who I am. If you cannot embrace or cope with me the way I am, it's okay. Uh, you can leave or you can just find your way mm. out. So can you imagine living with someone? And this is something even you did not see at the beginning or it was not clear, you didn't even agree on. But you come and find, I may give an example perhaps, you come and find or oh, somebody is a drunkard, you know, and this is something that you did not see before. And for you, th that's not a part of your values, you know. So it yes. becomes too hard to continue uh, with that, you know. So basically, these are uh, the what I can point out. And also, uh, not wanting to put some work on you, you know. Yeah. Because we, no one is perfect. And with time, just realizing you need to work on you, improve and uh, on you, do self-development. Um, but you do not want, you want just the way you are, that, that is you, and you do not want to work even towards the marriage, because marriage is work, you know, you will not just assume that you are there and you want it to, uh, uh, to be okay or, or things to run in the right way, you have to put in some work, mm -hmm. and everybody has to put in some work. So, and most of the time you find when now it starts, the marriage starts dying, it becomes one-sided, you know, Yes. You, you are the only one who is working towards the marriage. You are the one who is trying to, you know, to salvage it. But the other person, as I said, they, they are not there. They left long ago. They just come to report the way you come, <laughs> report, eat, sleep. And yeah, and <laughs> and to Nico. Nico, but <laughs> you are actually not there. Mm. So it becomes so uh, uh, overwhelming to the other person because you cannot really work on a marriage as a, you know, an individual. An individual. You need yes. to put the effort of the, of the, the two, two people. Yeah. And it's interesting what you've said. Because so many people have this phrase, me, me, me too, I'm just like this. So you take it or leave it. And especially in a marriage, you have to be willing to compromise. Mm -hmm. And if your partner brings up something, and it's, it's not something like it's physical or in your DNA that you physically cannot change. If it's a character, then you can just make the effort to do the work for your partner. Mm. So it's interesting when you hear a husband telling you, I'm just like this, or a wife saying the same, because 
if you want to work together and if you want to get better, then you have to compromise on some things. And that is very interesting that you've pointed out because in time you start feeling the energy and you start dissociating because you no longer want to give where someone is just taking and not feeding you the same way. So I want to understand, uh, Festus, you've Can told I us. Can I add one more thing as he comes in, which yes. is also very important. Definitely, definitely. <coughs> and this, I think, uh, happens mostly with women. Mm -hmm. As you get into marriage, uh, for the sake of making the marriage work, you lose your authenticity. Mm. You, you go and you get swallowed, you know, or you just start living under the other person. So that person who you were initially your potential, your purpose, everything, you, you lose it in marriage. Mm. And you get, because you do not, perhaps I am vocal, I ha, you know, I have, you know, I've been expressing myself, but getting there because you don't want to bring issue or bring something up that will cause you guys to s disagree, you slowly go and um, losing your quiet. voice. Mm. Before you realize you have no voice, you cannot say anything that you like or you dislike yeah. and with time we say once you lose your authenticity then you are dead as you've a person lost yourself. yes you've lost yourself and there's nothing bad as losing yourself we say you'd rather even lose the marriage other than losing you true yeah that's very true and it's interesting that you've brought that up because we had a conversation last week and one of our guests belinda odiambo she said the exact same thing because we're talking about women and how we act in relationships and some of us lose ourselves in relationships and it's all about my husband my children my in-laws and uh, whatnot so sometimes you put your careers on the back burner and yourself in the back burner and that is one very dangerous thing so if you're watching at home and you have lost yourself in your relationship whatever it is you need to find yourself do not lose yourself to be with whoever and do not even forget who you are because you want to maintain a marriage or a relationship so i wanted to find out she has mentioned something lack of uh, understanding why you cannot agree on how do we solve this what school do we take our children to how can you prove that in court because you've said you have to give <laughs> you have to write the reasons how do you prove my husband does not talk to me about this we cannot agree how you see there's something called uh, the marriage has uh, <laughs> been broken irretrievably mm -hmm. uh, simply put that you really can't just understand each other you really can't come to an agreement uh, for anything in that marriage and therefore uh, it becomes difficult for you people to progress on with the marriage uh, proving that uh, it depends on circumstances like uh, now you see for example if i stay in kileleshwa another person stays in karen and we are married. Uh, last mm. we talked was one year ago. We can't even discuss an issue of a child, a kid that we, we brought so forth. So you just take a screenshot and add it, it to the files? It, it, it really doesn't necessitate that. But you see, as I told you, there is the process of uh, divorce. Each and every person who wants a divorce to be or a marriage to be nullified must be brought to now give evidence. Now you can give oral evidence as to what has been happening oh. in your marriage. Okay. And how it now. Yeah. And that will be taken as evidence. And Not that's, that's that makes some, some of the things easier. Yes. Because yes, there are things that you can prove. Something like uh, abuse, you can prove abuse. Infidelity Just to on at top times. Of, uh, what you are saying, you will yeah. realize that marriage is, uh, so when there is a divorce proceeding, sometimes it becomes messy. Mm. And... Uh, in our legal uh, process, you will find it is kind of uh, protected. Even if you go and look at the course list, names might not be mentioned. Oh. They might use just the initials okay. to describe parties. So sometimes a party might feel not willing to give out documents confirming what has been happening in their marriage. And therefore, they don't file those documents. Mm. They would wish to go and give oral evidence. And in such evidence, like right now in Kenya, we are ra having these uh, online court sessions. So you will find if it is an online hearing, the magistrate will actually 
disconnect other people and only the parties involved in that proceeding will, oh, will share. yeah so that it is already protected within the oh. rights of each and every party that's nice because yeah. again <coughs> anything that's submitted becomes yeah. public exactly. property yeah. so then uh, that's a very nice way to yeah. preserve the yeah. integrity and the peace that this two already because you're dealing with uh, a divorce yeah. that already on its own yeah. is it's stressful it's yeah. so when you imagine that your in-laws can access yeah. your information and learn exactly what has been going on that might lead people to want to retain some information exactly. so that presents a good uh, alternative because if you can give oral evidence and it's listened to and taken into account then you can have some hope so I also want to understand, you mentioned being married for 12 years. Before you got to the point of divorce, did you make any effort aside from just between the two of you? Did you involve your family, a therapist perhaps? Did you involve any other third party to try and solve the issue? Yes, uh, even as to, if I may mention, before we finally divorced, we had, you know, uh, separated like for Rania six months then come back together that's for three times oh. three times before we finally called it quits oh. and in all this time we tried you know like um, involving uh, our parents elders involving church elders tried counseling but with all this it did not work. Mm. And um, there's something oh, through the, uh, over time that I've come to learn. Sometimes you stay in a marriage. It's perhaps it's abusive, it's toxic. And for that moment, you even, you are not even, you can't even be productive. You lost yourself totally. But perhaps you are staying in the name, you know, because of the, uh, societal expectations, you know, because of the parents, uh, you don't know friends, because of other people, you don't want to uh, uh, perhaps, you know, um, you don't want to, uh, uh, to, to carry shame yeah. because of what will happen. Yeah. So and you, sometimes you people stay. even say it's a failure, you, you are unable Thank you. to sustain yes. your marriage. You are unable, so they yeah. blame it on you. Mm -hmm. So you find, let me tell you, before you see somebody walking out, it's not that they just walk up and walked out yeah, mm. is something they have really tried many times and to the point that it get you get and you say now this one you know it, it quits cannot. for sure you have tried your best mm. and we normally say that is better other than staying in a place where uh, you totally lost yourself you are also even for your own sake and the other person yeah. because now um, you know, you're not even being fair to yourself and the other person because in that space, you are not even uh, in talking terms. You can't even agree on anything. To you, are you are just living like strangers by, by the way. And if an anything, you've even become uh, toxic to each other. Anything can happen because now the insults, b abuse, you know, yeah. and all that emotional abuse that now you, you cannot count on, you cannot show people that have been emotionally abused, you know, mm. that happens a lot, you know. Mm. So, and because there is no trophy in enduring in marriage, you'd rather be safe and be okay out there, you Definitely. know, and the other person the same way, yes. other than be together. And now in the, where even their children, it becomes even really bad because now you, the children get to, uh, they get to be affected by what they see. Mm and also what they hear. Mm. And, and they that also, it, it brings me to the next point. Mm -hmm. I wanted to ask you, did you have children from this marriage? Yes. What was the impact? Because I know for kids, they're very impacted by seeing their parents divorcing and separating. So what was the impact that you saw immediately with your children? Was it emotional or even in school and their behavior? What were the, the effects of the divorce on them? The children were totally affected deeply deeply affected because uh, they loved both of their parents their mom and their father but now they got into a point where they are meant to choose which now becomes so difficult for them and I remember in this time when we have we had even a children's uh, matter in court 
and the mother custody and the children are expected to choose who to stay with. And I remember even at younger age, uh, right now they are older, 22 and 13. By that time, uh, I think the younger one was around six, where they, were they went to the magistrate chamber to, you know, so that they can be. Um, <laughs> they decide, is it? Yes, they can be the, interviewed. Can yes, imagine. at that age, they went to the magistrate uh, chamber. It was that oh. bad. They had to be, you know, to make a decision who will they stay with. You can imagine subjecting that to them. And this is where I say uh, is where parents will become so uh, selfish. We do not care about what we are doing to the children. Because at that time, okay, for us we are adults, but we are using the children to fight this. The battle. To fight, to to fight this won. battle. Who is, you mm. know, but not knowing the effect that it has on children. Because I know um, my children, they had, uh, they got affected in school, their performance. Uh, they are even how they behaved in school. A lot, they you could see a lot, even their, their self esteem, they totally got affected, even to a point ahead, even to uh, take them to see a counselor because it was not easy for them to go through that process. At some point, I remember when you we were coming from uh, from the court and we were with them, and then now. Now we are done, the father is going and I'm going and you see they are divided, they wonder who to go with and yeah. they cried, they cried, they cried, you know. You mm. can imagine what that meant to them. So having gone through that, you know, getting to this point, I think I tell parents this is where you need to separate your issues, deal yes. with your issues, you as adults and let the kids, leave them out of it and uh, also work with them. Um, you know, in a different way, since also they are going through, it's not, not only you who is going through the pain of separation or divorce, yes, also the also children them. at their own level, they are going through that. Mm. So if you do not uh, help them at that point, it will catch up with them when they're adults and Later. they'll be seeking for help when it's too late. Mm. Yeah. And some may not even seek for help. Yeah. Because I think the children are affected in ways that are deeper than parents. Because sometimes they don't have the understanding of what is going on. And they're used to this traditional form of family. And now they have to be accustomed to mom stays here, and dad stays in the other place, and we have to share our time. So I want to, to see from the point of view of the law, she's just talked about having some of the custody hearings of who gets the children. What, what point, at what point do you get there? Or is it automatic that once you've filed for divorce and you have children, you have to have the custody sharing hearings? I think it is, uh, let me not call it automatic, but once you people want to live apart and you add kids, uh, you must decide how these kids are, are going to be. Mm. Nowadays, you find we also have to give uh, upload to the drafters of our constitution because they brought in other aspects you will find before. Uh, the custody of these children and their maintenance were only captured for under the divorce proceedings where each party, you see these are parties already contesting mm. uh, of how they want to move on with their life. But now we have a children's court and we have a children's act that gives prominence to the uh, welfare and well-being of a child. Mm. Uh, in any case, there is a child involved, whether yeah. it is the mother who has approached the court or it is the father. Uh, actually, the court just give prominence to these children. How are they going mm. to be catered for care of? And is that, is that partly why they were interviewed? I'm coming to that. So you will oh. find in giving the well-being of a child, there are so many things this court needs to look at. It's uh, not just who to live for. And uh, for clear the air, the court does not ask in those interviews because she can confirm to you they were never allowed in those interviews, it is the court and the children. They are never told that you have to decide whom you are going to be with. What the cause is trying to establish is their life. Every child will feel more comfortable being with this person or being as much as they were living together. So the court just tries to establish who is best placed to be with this child at this particular time. That does not deny the other party the right. There is, uh, orders for custody and there are orders for maintenance. Like if we are separating today or we are divorcing today and uh, my child is <coughs> used or our child is used to this kind of lifestyle, the mother might not be able, she is the mother, she is comfortable or well placed to take care of the minor. But now, is she in a position to provide the welfare that this child has been 
uh, uh, accustomed to all this while. If the mother is not in that position, that does not deny her the right to be with this child. The father will have to come in to maintain that lifestyle. And that is what we call maintainers now. Mm -hmm. Now, now that is now for the children, not their own issues of uh, we are divorcing. Mm -hmm. This is now just pertaining to the child. Mm -hmm. So once the court has established the issues surrounding this child and what needs to be taken care of, like the school fees, the clothing, the food, and shelter, the basic needs of a child, plus education is given prominence, uh, health is given prominence, and other basic rights. So mm -hmm. these parents must share. Mm -hmm. It's not just okay. that I'm not having jobs, so I'm not going. You have also, it is called mm -hmm. shared parental responsibility. Mm -hmm. You must also come in to give something. So the court conducts these interviews just to confirm from the children that what really would be your wish. They also have to give in their wishes. Then the court will now sit down because they will listen to the uh, whoever came for that custody, they will listen to the other party, then it will now come to an informed decision. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's very interesting because they prioritize the welfare of the children because ultimately <coughs> these are the parties that are most affected but they were not involved in the conflict at mm -hmm. all. Yeah. So I also want to, to find out, does the court also recommend therapy for, for the couples before you get to the final decision? Maybe you can tell us uh, briefly because uh, time Kidogo is not on our side uh, but is there any talk before you separate finally and divorce? Um, uh, our constitution allows under article 159 sub article 2c it allows uh, alternative dispute resolutions and uh, I think what you are asking me is whether people can talk before they finally get to court. Yeah it is, it is there but now that will depend with the parties. Oh. Uh, a court can only recommend to you. You see, once oh. you have come to court, court can as well tell you that, you see, instead, if you two could not agree, we can proceed to court and next mediation. We give you somebody, it knows, uh, not so much of the legal process as we do it, but uh, this is now a place where you just come in as parties. Uh, one is just there to listen to both of you, guide you through, but you are talking to each other and see if you can solve whatever d uh, differences you have. So the court and can I recommend. I think that's what I was trying to get yes. at. Because I think I've seen that in a film, <laughs> which may not be <laughs> e enough to inform <laughs> this, but I've seen that some people were advised to talk to a third party. A mediator was brought yeah. in. In our help. system, they are there. It is oh. operational and it is, uh, it's really helping. Oh. It also helps in the backlog of the court cases we have. So it's something that is really helping. Okay. As to child therapy, I think it is uh, also, it is recommended as well. I have seen a judgment where a magistrate has once given and I undertook that process, uh, once given a judgment that the children undergo therapy. Oh. But now you see these are extreme. They have other ram ramifications to the child. So if the parties, apart from your differences, you also, in a children's court, you are always asked to look at the interest of the child not your own interest. If you have your own interest, go to the divorce separate uh, or divorce as you want, then you can share whatever matrimonial property you want. Yeah. But now as you share them, remember you have children and that is what the court really looks at in a children's court. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. And I, I, I wanted to make a joke now because you've talked about sharing property. And there are people who think that you can marry someone who's wealthy, divorce in two years and get the money you've had, if you're not married for at least three years, there's no way <laughs> that's going to happen. So there are those, uh, the, the details that you have to be aware of. And now I want to discuss coping with divorce, because now you're, you're here, you're present, you've gotten to the process, you have family, you have church members, you have in-laws and the children themselves. How do you deal with all that? Because that way when you're stressed and you're dealing with all these other people, how can you cope with that entire process? First of all, divorce is a loss. And um, even we describe it, it's, it's more than, it's painful more than death because it has no closure. You see, for death, you bury and you know the person is gone. This one has no closure. You love to get to meet the person, hear about the person. And all the time, it's not that you, you're meeting them, you get to hear them uh, presenting themselves very well, perhaps in a way to agitate you or, or just to, you know, to make you angry, you can imagine. So getting to this to a closure is not easy. Mm -hmm. 
So going through divorce, since it's a loss, you know you need to really take your time and, and grieve over that loss. Because this is where, and uh, I've had this question before even people asking, perhaps you're in a very abusive marriage, you know, Ile for sure you're being beaten, you've come out with, with uh, marks and all that. But once you are out, other than now feeling a relief, you know, okay, at long last, you know, mm. good readers, you start now another journey, a painful process of now letting go. Since it's a loss, it's grief, you need to go through the process of that loss. So this is where you actually need to take time off. The, I know many people do a mistake. You think the fastest to heal is by jumping into another relationship. That's the big, biggest uh, mistake that has happened that we have seen. So take time off and get to heal yourself. Get to uh, revisit, you know, the marriage. What happened? Because we normally say it takes two to tango. There's no way you'll keep on pointing fig uh, fingers he did or she did. There's what you did also. It takes, there's your contribution to the failure of that marriage. So take time to do this. Because some other things even, they are not even uh, uh, known to you yourself. Perhaps they are due to uh, childhood trauma, due to unresolved issues in your life that you, you haven't, uh, you, you didn't really get to live uh, your life well in, uh, in marriage. So you need to take time off and uh, see a counselor, get to, uh, th uh, get avenues where you can process this, where you can heal, because it's not easy. It can even take many years as you go through this process. This is where many people, they even sink into depression, they get into addictive behaviors, trying to cope with this because it's not easy. So it's a, a time, this time, you really need support, mm -hmm. support of, the, of your family, and we've had scenarios, because even uh, as you mentioned, where even you get your family rejects you. You know, we don't want shame. We send you off through a big wedding kindly. That's shame. So we are not associated with you anymore. Friends go. You know, again, the in-laws, perhaps you are very close to, uh, uh, to you. They are not talking to you anymore. The church used to go now. They are not really, they're looking at you with that eye. You know, you didn't uh, do well in your marriage. So you wonder, you just live a lonely life. Everybody seems to uh, to run away from you so it's a very is a space that is very very lonely uh, painful that you actually need a lot of grace a lot of uh, strength to pull through that because you it's a, a place where you can easily uh, lose break yourself, yes and lose more. yourself mm -hmm. yeah and you you do counseling yeah. for for divorce specifically and your organization as well sadref yeah D does that deal with divorce do you help people who've dealt with it and how we're going through it and how to overcome some of the issues. Do you do that through the organization? Yes, yes. We have programs. We call them healing programs. The, once you are out of your marriage, what we normally say, we don't really uh, uh, care, you know, who did what, but we want to support you through the process of healing so that you can pick yourself up uh -huh. and get, because at that point, you lose your sanity, you lose yourself to, uh, totally. We try to help you stabilize emotionally by taking you through programs to understand what is that that happened or rather just to unpack because that's what you need. Unpack everything, the whole thing. It's painful, but what we say, for you to come out better, you'll go through the painful process of unpacking mm. of what happened because yeah. uh, you need to process. You cannot just bury it under, under the carpet and say, you know, it's behind me. No, you have to unpack it. You have to process yeah. so that you get to a point that you feel better. So we have uh, healing programs. We have divorce care programs where even we have support groups. We are now uh, we uh, they come together just to support each other, share their journeys, and also just uh, uh, drive uh, strength and encouragement from each other. Mm, that's yeah. very very nice. Yeah. And the fact that you provide support for these uh, individuals is also helpful because you've highlighted the value of having a strong group of people who are supportive around you. Now I'm curious, through the organization and through the different uh, classes, have you ever encountered people who are regretful of their decision and they want to go back? Because what you've just explained is someone uh, wondering, where did I go wrong? How did I get here? What can I fix? What could I have done different? So have you gotten people who decided I need to go back to my marriage and I need to go back to my, my home or things like that? 
Okay, in the uh, during the journey, healing journey, we normally say we have three exits. Uh, as you come now to healing, one of the exits, there are people who will be, they'll have, uh, through the process, they'll have realized their mistake. Perhaps they didn't give it time, perhaps they overreacted. So we've had people going back to their marriage. We've had people reconciling with their spouses. That is one. Second, we've gotten uh, to a place, we call it camp, camp civility, where now you have got to a place you have accepted, it cannot work between me and my, um, my ex-husband, and to a point of forgiving them that you, you even do not feel anything uh, really uh, pain ab about them, you actually forgive them, and then you start the journey of co-parenting. In a healthy way that you even you sit, you discuss about the children, how you, you take them to school, even at times during the parents meeting you will go together yes you are not together but now you just make a decision that we need to get to a, a place of camp being civil you know yeah, and just uh, relating in a good way for the sake of the children and remember now at this time we are you know our separate ways then getting the third option and that point there could be either who they have made a decision i'm okay as a single person l let me just do what it takes just to remain as i am mm. the third exit we've had and a number of them, many who now get to the space of remarriage. They marry the second time. Yes, after now realizing, okay, now that one cannot work, but I don't have the grace mm. to really uh, live as a single person. Mm. So there's the other option now, get they remarried. get to remarriage. Mm, yeah. That's interesting. So can you highlight for us, what does sadref mean in full? And where can we find you? Because I'm pretty sure there's someone who's watching us who's very interested in finding your organization. Okay, SADREF in full means separation and divorce recovery forum. Uh, yes, in based in Africa. And what we do, we train, we equip and support people who are going through uh, toxic marriages, difficult relationships, separation and divorce. And with an objective, uh, helping them to pick themselves up again. We say them being whole again. So it's not the aspect of what you did, what you did, just having you as we deal with an individual. It doesn't matter what mistake you did, but we want to have you whole. As a person, as after, a person the whole experience. after the whole experience. Okay. So under that we have different programs that we do mm -hmm. because now there are other things that come uh, with that. And one, yes. as he has said, the legal aspect of it. So we partner with legal firms just to yeah. make sure uh, we support the them. Other, other yes, uh, I feel him. like maybe we can find your website because time is really okay. not yes, yes, yes. yes. We so are, We have our uh, website where you can uh, check www.sadref dot com and we also we are on social media handles facebook sadref africa and also youtube sadref africa and also jenny washira there's a lot that we have done you can check you can reach um uh, to us there are, we have contact numbers there email address you can always uh talk to us and mm. we will be able to support you Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. That was very clear. And I hope you've gotten uh, some idea of where you can find her and the organization. You've taken note of that. So maybe in conclusion, I can we can hear from the man of the law. You can just tell us what, what goes into co-parenting. Because you mentioned a few things about with the, the children, prominence of the children and their welfare. You mentioned uh, the, there was the experience. Was it the experience? I'm mm. sorry, you mentioned two things about the children that you really prioritize. The person who's going to maintain their lifestyle and the person who's going to be there who they feel is attached to them. So clarify on that because as of Imepotea uh, Kwakili, I'm sure there's someone else at home who's also missed that. So that and also clarifying on the, the co-parenting, what the law says about co-parenting and the guidelines that are set. Maybe for someone who's watching and who's undergoing that and they're having issues with their ex-husband or wife because I've, I've had so many cases of that. When it comes to the children, we have uh, that is now what we call custody. We have the legal custody and the actual custody. The legal custody, so long as you, uh, it is proved that you are a biological, either mother or father, you will, the court cannot deny your legal custody. 
you have a right to the legal custody. Then there's the aspect that people move to court now to fight for. That is the actual custody. Who, be, who is going to stay with these children? What are we going to do? Mm. So th this is uh, where now if it is so much protracted war between the two parties, the court will have to factor in the wishes of the child. And that is when now the child interview is done. They get to factor in what is the feeling of this child, which party does he feel safe to be with, or things of the road. But mm. that as well, even if you are given the actual custody, the other party is going to be given access to the child. Oh, this yes. is now what we call the co-parenting. You will find uh, the mother is with the children uh, or lives with the children. So automatically we love to be with the children from Monday to Friday during school going, holiday, uh, school going days. Then over the weekend it is the father who, who has to the with the children. Mm. So they will love to co-parent. And in the issue of co-parenting, if they can't agree, the court will spell it out. But mostly you will find they, they always agree as to how so long as they have been, uh, they have decided or maybe the court has directed them through their counsels or whichever, uh, even if they are uh, appearing alone, they will have decided that uh, if these children are coming to your place, there's no need of carrying clothes, so you will buy clothes I bu as I buy them when they are home. So they have yeah. their own belongings. Their own belongings, each mm. and in every house, because all these yeah. are the houses. And uh, also other maybe issues you will can add, yeah. let's say one of the parents does not agree. We've mm. had so many stories of deadbeat fathers and mm. uh, where they neglect the children and they do not pay fees and bills. I Cases like that, how do you deal with that? That is why the children's court is there. Uh, you will find the party that is feeling this uh, weight of taking care of the children alone can move the court, and the court will give specific orders. This is where they will be ordered to maintain the other party. Mm -hmm. So long as you, you can guide court to tell court there are those that are employed, their salaries can be attached. There are those even if they are not employed, but you know because this is somebody you had been with, uh, you know he has a source of livelihood, and the court can order that per month this is the amount to be paid. What the court does not compromise on is education, shelter, food, and health. Yes, the that basic the court will needs. not. Uh, the basic needs the court will not uh, mm. compromise on. Thank Both you. parties will love to. You have to provide it because exactly you're the parents of, of these children. children. Thank you for that. So maybe uh, because time mm. is Imeisha, you can just give us a parting shot. Tell us from the, the perspective of a legal head and a legal figure, what can you advise someone who's going through divorce, who's thinking about divorce, or who has already divorced, but they're having some issues with their ex-partner? You know, as, uh, as advocates, we are also counselors. And uh, one thing I can say is uh, before you undertake the legal process of divorce, always have a moment with yourself. Think through it mm. and get to know. The law, yes, will guide you to achieve whatever you want to achieve, but it is your own decision mm. to make. So before you come to that decision that this is what I want, before you make that step, be sure within you that this is really what I want. Mm. The law can only guide you and can help you From achieve there. whatever you want. Mm, thank yeah. you for that. And Maybe you can give a contact as, uh, detail or where oh. we can find you in case we need advice. Okay. Uh, I practice with E.M. Onyari Advocates as an associate advocate there. We are based at Commerce House, Moy Avenue, okay. fourth floor, room 402. Thank you. Yeah. So you've heard where he's at. His name is uh, Festus Nam, yeah. an advocate of the High Court. Thank you so much for the wealth of information. Jenny, you can give us your parting shot. Where we can find you, because you've told us some of the other details, just briefly tell us your parting shot to someone who's going through divorce, who has children involved and they're having issues and they're even dealing with their own stress. How do they get through it? I'll summarize it by saying, broken crayons steal color. It does not matter what broke you or at what point you are at. You can still pick up your pieces and live your life again. And what I normally say, it's your, it's your, it's your own responsibility to seek healing. Mm. Yeah.
Thank you. That is very well said. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that. Thank you for all watching as well. I'm going to read some of your names briefly because we can't pull that up today, unfortunately. Willie Bazoo, count me in. Thank you for watching. Kadan Cherry, Deno Jiwal, Willie Bazoo again, Mishi, Mainane, Vincent Ogembo, Manu Kiemba, Westlands Nairobi, Vincent Wambua, Vincent Ogembo, Derek Rakama, Walter Wakagundi, and uh, so many other people. We have Derek Rakama, Celicio Muruki. Thank you so much, all of you who've taken your time to watch us tonight, who've written us any comments. Come on, me to Liza Swali. I'm really sorry that we've been unable to answer you today, but we will do so next week. Thank you again for watching Y254 TV. Thank you for the amazing team that has been here with us, the operators, my producer, Timo. He is the best and we appreciate it. Uh, that has been it for today. My name is Cheryl Blessing. This is the Power Talk Show.